الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سيجعل لهم الرحمن مدا فإنما يسرناه بلسانك لتبشر به المتقين وتنذر به قوما لدا وكم أهلكنا قبلهم من قرن هل تحس منهم من أحد أو تسمع لهم ركزا صدق الله العظيم As in our previous sessions we were talking about our ancestors we talked about the first three Khulafa al-Rashidin and we were talking about the fourth of the Khulafa al-Rashidin <coughs> Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu and I mentioned in our previous session that we had that one of the most important qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Ali radiallahu anhu with was his wisdom, the understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted him. And because of the great knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed Ali radiallahu anhu with, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said in a hadith Ana baytul hikmati wa aliyun babuha I am the house of the wisdom and the Ali radiallahu anhu is the door towards that house blessed with so much wisdom that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that he is the door to my wisdom to understand my wisdom, come through Ali radiallahu anhu so that you can understand it properly. That's the door to the wisdom of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we find so many of his khutbahs, letters, advices, and will that he had written to different people full of hikmah, full of wisdom. Of course, we don't have the time and this is not the session to get to go through all of those lectures of Ali radiallahu anhu that are quoted in the books of history and hadith. But inshallah, we'll go few things, through few things, some of his sayings, whether they were during khutbahs, or during personal conversations, advises to his children or others, close people to him, that will at least give us the understanding how Hakim, full of wisdom, this person was. And what a great gift it is when a person will have this great gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be blessed by this treasure by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day Ali radiallahu anhu said to people, as he was advising people close to him, he said, Qimatu kullim ma yuhsinu. Every person is valued by the things that he can do properly. Whatever you do in your life, people will know you by that name. As we know it nowadays, that this brother is a doctor. That's his profession. So people know him as a doctor. This brother is a teacher. 
So he said, do you know brother Muhammad? Which Muhammad? The one who is the teacher. Ali radiallahu anhu advises the people that be the people of Islam so people will always recognize you through your deen and iman. Whatever you do properly in this life and perfectly, people will know you through that. Have the most perfect thing in your life, this deen and this deen and iman. So people will know you through this. That do you know brother Ahmad, which Ahmad? The one who who's always reciting Quran. Do you know brother Dawood, which Dawood? The person who's always helping people. So people are valued according to what they do in their lives. And since talking about this, I just remembered another point. When sometimes we are reciting the ayahs of the Quran al Karim, and especially for those of us who get a chance to have a, having a dialogue with non Muslims, Christians, and Jews, the people of book. Many times these people, when they go back and refer to the ayahs of Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem, they don't feel that Qur'an is giving them any importance. But we need to tell them. And ask them in fact, what is the most valuable thing they have according to their understanding? Just like if a person would ask us, irrespective of our behavior and our actions, if a person will ask me today, what is the most valuable thing you have? I'm sure all of us will say, Iman, our deen. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the people, the Jews and Christians in Quran, He says, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O people of book, what is the most valuable thing they have? Is the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with. O oh, people of book, come and listen to Allah who gave you that book. He wants to talk to you now. Come back and listen to him. Ya Ahl al Kitab. O oh, people of book, there isn't any better word you can find for calling those people that, O oh, people of book, what else we can say? What, uh, what, what other better word we can find for them to call them? This is the best thing as we see they have. They lost their feet, they lost everything else, but at least they used to say, We have this book. We are holding to the book. We are proud that we have a book and they are calling themselves that we are the people of book. Here, Ya Ahl al-Kitab. Quran is calling them with that name. Every person is valued by what, by what, what he does. So accordingly, Ali radiallahu anhu advises us that do the best deeds in your life so that you are known by those deeds. And another occasion, Ali radiallahu anhu said, he says, laziness is a disease. Each and every word really is full of wisdom. How many times we skip so many things in our life just because of laziness? I don't feel like doing it at this time. There is nothing else. Most of us who are considered to be very busy, if we look at our schedules ourselves we don't want others to judge us but if we judge ourselves and see how many times we have a time to do a lot of other things in our life things for which people will consider he's so busy this is why he cannot do it but if we look at ourselves we'll realize that we have that disease of laziness many times people when they eat something now they have some trash in their hand, they have some garbage in their hand. Too lazy to get up and go and throw it in the garbage can, will try to just aim to the garbage can and throw it there. Whether it goes out or not. Ali radiallahu anhu continues to say, وَالزُّهْدُ ثَرْوَةً He said, not having the love of the worldly gain is one of the greatest treasures the treasure is not to collect more of it. The treasure is not to have the love for it. If a person doesn't have the love for it, will never be running after it, will never consider himself as a poor man. A person who has a lot of love for it, no matter how much he has, still he feels, I don't have enough, I'm still a poor man. 
and this is a disease that we have too. That each and every one of us, when we look at ourselves and how much we have, we feel still I need much more than what I have. And because we need much more than this, so we are always poor. Even to ourselves, in spite of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's great blessings that we have, we still I am a very poor man. And here we find people like Ali radiallahu anhu, <coughs> who had nothing to the extent one day he's out in the market selling his sword, saying to people, Oh people, today I'm selling this sword by which I had protected Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I had money to just buy one sheet to cover myself, I would not sell the sword. But because I don't have proper clothing and I had to borrow from someone else, therefore I'm trying to sell the sword so I can buy a prayer of dress for myself. And then, same person, when he gets the money, and someone sent him a lot of gift, he said, I'm not going to keep it for myself because they gave it to me because I'm Amir al-Mu'mineen. If I wasn't Amir al-Mu'mineen, they won't give it to me. So if I got it because of this position, then I should put it in Bayt al -Mah. So he puts it in Bayt al -Mah. By the night time before he goes to bed, he went and called all, made an announcement in Medina Munawwara. Any person who has any need, come and get whatever you want from Baytul Mal. I will be standing at the door of Baytul Mal. And before he goes to bed, the whole Baytul Mal was empty. He swept the Baytul Mal with his own hands. And now he says, Alhamdulillah, I have no burden on my shoulders. That's the treasure. That after all of this, he feels, <coughs> Alhamdulillah, I have everything. You ask those people, how are you? Are you in need of something? I don't need nothing. One of the scholars was asked by a king. He said, ask me for something. And of course, the king feels that he's going to ask me for some money, for some wealth. Ask me for something. He says, no, I can't. I don't want to ask you. Alhamdulillah, Allah has fulfilled all of my needs. And he knows that he does not even have a piece of bread at his home to eat. No, Allah blessed me with a lot of blessings. I, I don't need anything else. So he insisted and he wanted him to get something from him. So finally, when he insisted too much, he said, if you really want to give me, then give me a guarantee of the Jannah. I can't do that. I have no power over that. He said, okay, if you don't have that and you insist that I need, I must take something from you, then at least give me a longer life than I have. I, I don't even have control over that. He said, then what do you want me to ask you for? Ask me for some wealth, some money. He said, as far as this is concerned,